stay home. Oh my... Hi everybody and welcome back to the Willy St. Willy channel once again and lately i've been on a bit of an analog horror kick and if you tune into the stream i did a couple weeks back you'll see i reacted to a few more popular up and coming and also lesser known analog horror series on that stream and one of which i'm talking about here today and the series in question would be godzilla invasion by jacob animation now yes i reacted to a few more pretty good analog horror series during the stream but I like Godzilla, okay? So I chose this one to talk about, okay? Don't hold it against me. If you watch my Godzilla Analog Horror Man in the Suit video, you'll know that I am indeed a huge Godzilla fan, so that should explain why I chose to talk about this one. But speaking of my recent you know, Analog Horror content, my last video, everyone talked about my Mulchat Doma shirt, and yes, I'm also a fan of Mulchat Doma. They have some bangers okay some certified hood classics and when i read the comments like half of them were just talking about my shirt so i chose to wear this one because i just got done watching the quiet on the set documentary and i realized that the director of the amanda bind show and other nickelodeon shows like drake and josh uh virgil fabian was wearing my exact same shirt that i own so i'm like dude i'm gonna wear this one because if you decide to watch that documentary, a trigger warning. But anyway, on to the topic at hand. Now, not that many people have talked about Jacob Animation series, and I think that's a good thing because I like shedding light on a lesser known uh, creative work because I don't like making a video that like 20 other popular YouTubers have already talked about. It makes me feel like I'm just trying to piggyback off of them, so yeah. Now, it's not very easy to create a good Godzilla analog horror series, and all things considered, I think Jacob did a pretty good job. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as the series stands right now, there's only seven videos, with the first one being The Godzilla Rampage, The Invasion of Godzilla, Volume 1. The video opens with a PSA from the company Monster Discovery talking about planet Earth and all the various aquatic life on it amongst a few undiscovered species. Now, Monster Discovery believes that this large unidentified creature, or Godzilla, is either an unidentified new species of aquatic life or the result of a mutated aquatic animal being exposed to radiation. The video that cuts to the aftermath of a cruise ship sinking that had no survivors and 54 people being missing or unaccounted for. We then see pictures taken by lifeguards near a shoreline of a strange large creature emerging from the shore. We see flashes of a nuclear power plant before we see text reading, we don't know what's down there and it could come any time. Be prepared. But, <laughs> dude, every time I hear that scream, I just think of the why did Jake do that meme. <laughs> Apple pie. I'm gonna eat it all before you even get there. <laughs> That's... I'm sorry, keep going. I'll let, I'll let the video finish. <laughs> Thank you. 
the creature attacks the city, killing hundreds and hundreds of citizens, we start to get information about the creature. The creature attacked the city not because the creature wanted to kill humans, but to find and consume nuclear reactors around the city in order to fulfill the creature's development. The origin of this creature is unknown, it could be a fish or a creature that consumed nuclear waste dumped in the sea, then mutated. Until the creature must consume nuclear radiation continuously during its growth period. The creature might come back to land to look for a nuclear reactor. So we have to be prepared if at any time this creature will come. We have to find a way to destroy it, because if we let it, the creature will be bigger and bigger and stronger than before. Be prepared. So as we can see in the first video, this series is somewhat inspired by Shin Godzilla, which basically that version of Godzilla can continuously grow and evolve seemingly without any limit until it basically becomes completely unstoppable. Now, even though the initial video is still pretty cool, a Godzilla rampage from the perspective of the normal humans in a city, um, I think the future entries um, really make the most out of the premise in a post-attack um, setting. Uh, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get further along. The next entry titled Post Attack, The Invasion of Godzilla opens with Monster Discovery discussing how the initial attack of Godzilla in the US left several thousand people dead. But as a result of Godzilla devouring dozens of nuclear power plants and also Godzilla's presence himself, thousands of people were exposed to radiation. And as a result, many people are in need of immediate medical attention. And even though Godzilla himself returned to the sea, the threat of another attack constantly looms over people as Godzilla will seek more nuclear power plants to continue his growth and evolution. The video then abruptly cuts to a log written by a man named Connor Kingston. Okay, so with that ending with Godzilla shedding his skin and also the text reading that, oh, alluding to another future threat, I don't know if that means it's referring to another kaiju in this setting or if it's referring to a possible future evolution of Godzilla as of right now. But the next entry of this series gets into what I think is the coolest part of this setting that Jacob is going for. The next video is titled... Godzilla Virus, Invasion of Godzilla, Volume 2. Did you know that the food sold near you may have been exposed to the radiation produced by Godzilla? In the current worrying situation, you have to be careful about what you consume. Especially, meat. According to reports from animal health institutions, around 50% of livestock have been contaminated by the radiation produced by Godzilla. What are the impacts of consuming meat or other foods contaminated by high levels of radiation? The risks are cancer, cell damage, and other things. The radioactivity released by Godzilla contaminates the grass and livestock start to eat it. And the results of milk from cows exposed to radiation have resulted in hundreds of people being rushed to the hospital. Meanwhile, Hundreds of other people were rushed to the hospital due to eating meat from animals exposed to high levels of radiation and eating fruit that was also contaminated with radiation. You don't want that to happen to you. Right? So Miracle Market continues to give their guarantee that all of their products are up to code and safe for consumption, just so long as they're prepared properly. However, the video then cuts to another PSA of a new threat as a result of a post-Godzilla attack world. Be alert and always keep your weapon with you wherever you go. If you want to leave the house, bring your weapon and always be alert. And most importantly, wear your mask so you don't get exposed to radiation from Godzilla. 
If you find someone out there or inside your house starting to get dizzy, vomiting, diarrhea, headaches, can't control their saliva, please take them to the hospital as soon as possible. All these symptoms are accompanied by the following signs. Or if they are difficult to control and aggressive, immediately find a room to hide and call an ambulance. This also applies to you. If you experience the symptoms we mentioned earlier, immediately go to the hospital. Or if you are starting to lose your sanity, lock yourself somewhere, so as not to hurt others. Please be alert and implement what we have just said. Yes, that's right. You're seeing this correctly. There are human Godzilla mutated hybrids, zombie things. Yeah, that it, it, I feel like this would be like a potential sequel to Shin Godzilla. I know they would never make a sequel to Shin Godzilla, but I feel like in that universe, this I can see this happening with like these strange mutations and diseases that come about because of Godzilla's initial attack. But uh, anyway, let's uh, finish up the video. Now the PSA concludes stating that they're still trying to investigate and figure out what exactly is causing this mutation and this infection. I am assuming we can all guess why before it cuts to a diary entry from a Godzilla attack survivor named Martha. We survived Godzilla's attack on Brooklyn. Our house has been destroyed, we have lost everything, but we decided to move to our late grandmother's house in New York. My dad is a firefighter. My dad saved dozens of lives that night. But one night, my dad coughed really badly. One week passed and my dad's condition became increasingly worrying. His eyes were red, his skin had red bruises, we don't know what happened to Dad, but we hope Dad gets well soon. We try to take Dad to the hospital, but the hospitals around us are so full. Because we had been waiting for a long time, we decided to go back home, because Dad couldn't stand it anymore. Tonight, we were surprised by a scary sound from Dad's room. We find Dad attacking Mom. I don't know what I could see, but all I could see was blood everywhere. My sister and I ran into our room, then locked the door. Not long after... My father started banging on our door. He doesn't sound like a human anymore. He sounded like a rabid animal. My sister and I ran into our closet. I called the police. They picked it up and said they will send help. The clock chimes and every time we hear a police car passing by our house, our hopes rise. Only to find out that it just passed our house. I woke up this morning. We can't stay in here forever. I'll go outside to get help through the window. Our early neighbors are at the far end of this dead complex. Maybe this is my last note. Even if I don't succeed, at least I can catch up with my mother in heaven. Ah uh, yes, classic parent gets infected with deadly mutating disease and kills children. Uh, classic story, love to see it. See, to me, this is the point where the series starts getting really interesting and I really dig it. And that being said, on to the next entry, The Army of Godzilla, The Invasion of Godzilla. The video opens with a collection of different government health officials stating how this Godzilla virus isn't really a virus at all, but is simply the result of radiation directly from Godzilla. And this radiation isn't like normal nuclear or electromagnetic radiation, but something else entirely, and that could even affect livestock and food and water. 
You see, during the attack of Godzilla, his atomic breath and just mere physical presence causes such a huge, intense amount of radiation that anyone who is directly exposed to it starts to mutate into a strange human-Godzilla hybrid. And the government recommends that everyone wear their masks, avoid eating meat entirely, and also lock their doors and windows as there are several infected people roaming the city that they have yet to contain. The video then cuts to the perspective of some unknown person exploring a supermarket. After the encounter with the strange mutated creature in the store, the video then cuts to a presentation by the National Virology Organization on the stages of mutation with the Godzilla virus. Stage 1 has the patient experience headaches, nausea, vomiting, and body aches, but overall the patient is still sane and normal. Stage 2 has the patient experience loss of consciousness, scratching, red eyes, red bruises all over the body, and small lumps in the back. Stage 3 is the patient experience a complete loss of consciousness, increased aggravation, uncontrolled drooling, pale to gray skin, and a lump behind their back starting to grow. The patients also try to attack and eat other humans. Stage 4 is the patient experience a complete body structural change. Thorns begin to come out of their back. They have increased speed, walk using hands and feet. They become increasingly uncontrollable and very destructive and even start to become more intelligent and effective at hunting other humans. And unfortunately, it's also stated that there is no possible way to help the patients with no sort of medicine or treatment. The only way to stop the infection is to kill the patient. They also go over the effects of eating contaminated food and the strange mutations that accompany it. Eating mutated food results in headaches, stomach and rectal pain, vomiting blood, passing stools accompanied by blood with red clots having thorns on them. This happens because the food itself mutates into strange lumps of flesh that devour the patient from the inside out. The presentation then goes on to show the radiation area of Godzilla's attack with Brooklyn being the epicenter. As a result, the entire city is quarantined in order to prevent infection to other areas. The hospitals and medical centers that receive all the people infected with this Godzilla virus have basically turned into death camps with doctors' advice to simply kill the patients infected with this disease. The video then ends from the perspective of someone trapped inside of the quarantine city. All right, guys, so as you can see now, this series is basically turning into The Last of Us, except instead of a fungal infection, it's a uh, Godzilla radiation <laughs> sickness, basically. And uh, I'm all here for it. However, that being said, the next entry is probably my favorite one in the entire series Jacob is doing so far. And that would be, That's Not Our Neighbor, 
found footage, the invasion of Godzilla. The video opens with Monster Discovery discussing how 154 mutated people have been killed in the street during their eradication campaign, with 93 mutated people being killed in the hospital. However, they do go on to note that there are most likely many other infected people that are still evading capture and extermination. The video then cuts to the perspective of a man living in a neighborhood in Minnesota, with his new neighbor acting a little strange the past few days. My neighbor's been uh, shouting frequently for three days. Um, I tried checking his house, but he wouldn't let me enter it. Uh, other neighbors had also approached him, but he didn't do anything to him. <laughs> tried calling the police to go check his house but they said they didn't see anybody inside the house this is very strange because every night I hear there's activity in the house this has been going on for a week and uh, I'm getting more and more worried about what's going on considering he is a new neighbor in this complex that this man is someone from around New York who moved here and has mutated. Many of my friends said that uh, many of their new neighbors who they suspected were mutated. People were trying to save themselves from the operation to exterminate mutated people. What the hell? Oh my... Pick up the call. Before the video ends, you see two news articles, one discussing the massacre that took place in St. Paul, Minnesota as a result of the infected people, but another more mysterious one discussing the closure of 21 different zoos around America. I love the premise. I love this. It's just very eerie. This, the idea of a regular dude having to deal with these infected mutant Godzilla creatures is just really fun. I like it. But before I give my thoughts on the overall series, we only have two more entries left, with the next one being the mitosis of Godzilla. The video opens with what appears to be a skinless red Godzilla walking around before cutting to a monster discovery research conducted on the effects of radiation on zoo animals. And at first, everything seems pretty normal. 
the first tape we watch, tape number eight, just showcases all the animals in their enclosures with seemingly no issues. That is until we get to tape number nine. And after showcasing these infected animals, the video then cuts to a police dash cam with a radio chatter discussing the two sisters trying to hide from their infected father from a previous entry. Before the police patrol vehicle is stopped by a group of mysterious figures. <laughs> we have researched more deeply about Godzilla apart from examining cases of people who were mutated due to Godzilla's radiation. Apart from Godzilla being able to make people mutate and turn into monsters, it has other abilities that we have recently learned about. When Godzilla attacks the city with its laser beam, the laser is so hot, it even burned its own mouth. Fragments of flesh that were burned and melted by its own laser beam were separated from its body and could live on their own. Meanwhile, when Godzilla was about to return to the sea, Godzilla grew bigger shedding it old skin, but this is a new threat to us, because Godzilla's skin, flesh and spines are not dead, they are all alive and in a few months will start to grow big, grow heads, hands, feet and so on, before finally turning into Godzilla itself. This is called mitosis, where cell division produces two daughter cells with the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. Godzilla is able to do this with its flesh, even a small fragment of its flesh can grow into another Godzilla. However, what we find from the Godzillas is that the results of Godzilla's flesh being peeled off, they are still very weak. However, you still have to be alert because they move quite quickly and aggressively. Their only ability is to bite, eat or envelop their prey in their body contents. So yes, you heard that correctly. Even small fragments of Godzilla's flesh can mutate and grow into another Godzilla themselves. So in order to prevent this, they obviously need to be wiped out. But as you can see, it's not going very well. This would explain the skinless red Godzilla we saw at the beginning of the video as he was shedding his skin and all the fragments of his old skin are turning into smaller Godzilla creatures. The video then cuts to the bodies of the police officers killed previously in the video, before a hulking, pulpy red mass overcomes the screen and absorbs them. We then cut to a map of the world in the initial radiation zone. And despite the positive messages of reassurance we got from the government and other public agencies, we see that 
there is no stopping this infection. These Godzilla creatures and this Godzilla virus is not being contained, and the entire world is soon to be overtaken by it. So yes, basically, uh, we're cooked, okay? We're, we're cooked. Humanity's done. We're, there is no recovering from this, okay? How are we supposed to stop these mutated Godzilla creatures, which they're Apparently, there are several hundred or thousands of them. It also, on top of that, we have a virus to worry about from the radiation caused by Godzilla. And then on top of all that, we have the possibility of another Godzilla attack. That's right. The initial Godzilla, the OG, is still somewhere out there in the world. It can easily attack anywhere else in the world, whatever he feels like. So, yeah, um, have fun with that information. Oh, and how could I forget? Yeah, there's potentially a Godzilla cult. That's what those mysterious road figures were that killed the cops. Yeah, that's probably some sort of weird Godzilla worshiping cult that we don't really know much about. So, yeah. Isn't that great? But guys, we still have one more entry to cover. And that would be a new death has been born. The video opens discussing the secret government nuclear testing operation called Operation Crossroads that took place on July 1st, 1946 in Bikini Atoll. On July 1st, 1946, the U.S. carried out an atomic bomb testing operation. The operation was named Operation Crossroads. Operation Crossroads was a program to investigate the effects of nuclear blasts on Navy vessels. The operation was carried out at Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands of the Central Pacific. Carried out from July 1st, 1946 to July 25th, 1946. The first bomb detonated was the Abel Bomb. However, when the explosion occurred, the U.S. Navy, who were at a distance from the explosion, heard a sound. Another sound besides the bomb explosion. We speculate that this might be the sound of a whale, or a similar large animal being blasted by the powerful explosion of the Abel Bomb. After the explosion ended, we waited several hours before finally sailing our ship towards the ships that were test results of the Abel Bomb attack. However, one of the experimental ships was covered in bloody flesh. Plus, there was a large scratch on the ship's hull, like a lion's big paw. We don't have a clue what that is. It could have been blood from a whale, and the explosion caused damage to the ship's hull, which happened to be shaped like a lion's paw. Operation Crossroads, July 25th, 1946. This was the last day of Operation Crossroad. We prepared everything and got ready to detonate the second bomb, called the Baker Bomb. After the explosion was over, we checked again on the ships that were used for experiments. There were no strange signs like what had happened when the Abel Bomb exploded. The military packed up their things and sailed back to the U.S. However, on the way back to the U.S., the crew heard something from the sea. It was similar to the sound of a large animal screaming when the Abel Bomb exploded. At first, the crew ignored it and speculated that it was just a whale. However, it wasn't a whale, or anything else we know of. The voice comes from a huge creature we never see. The creature is shaped like a dinosaur with spines behind its back. There were fresh wounds all over its body that were still bleeding. The creature was almost half the size of the ship. The creature damaged the ship's hull and began attacking the crew by trying to climb onto the ship. The creature claimed the lives of 29 crew members. While the creature was blindly trying to sink the ship, we attacked it with a gun. But the gun didn't work very well. We also threw missiles at it, which then injured the creature so that it fell back into the sea. That night, all the crew members were on guard in case the creature was still alive and would attack them again. Fortunately, the ship managed to sail to the U.S. without being attacked again by the creature. They believe that the creature was most likely killed by the missile attack. Ocean Beach, November 30th, 1978, San Francisco. In the afternoon at Quiet Ocean Beach, the creature returned to land, but the shape is no longer the same. The creature's form was much different than before, compared to its form in 1946. Its body was upright and much taller than before, reaching a height of 50 meters. The creature began attacking housing near the beach, the military tried their best to fight the creature. After half an hour of trying as hard as they could to fight the creature, we threw bombs at the creature that managed to hurt it. In pain, the creature crawled back into the sea. Several residents have died as a result of attacks by this creature. In order not to worry the people, the government completely covered up the case of attacks by this creature. But a week later, a photo of the creature was leaked to the public. However, residents only believed it to be a hoax. But the question, what is that creature? Was the creature that attacked the U.S. ship the same creature that attacked San Francisco? If so, how could the creature survive various military attacks? This document was recorded in 1985. We don't know whether at any time the creature will return or not, but the only thing we can do is be prepared if at any time the creature comes back. We then cut to an interview with Stephanie Brinkley, who is a survivor of the Godzilla meat food fraud 
and a survivor of the Godzilla food contamination. My family and I are not careful in situations like this, considering that all food and other items are expensive due to that creature's attacks. We try to look for affordable food nearby. The only thing we can buy is canned beans. We have to save our money to survive the next day. Until one day, Mom and Dad got a newspaper advertisement selling meat and other necessities at affordable prices. And they bought it, but we are not alert. In times like this, people deceive each other for their own selfish interests. Me and my family ate that food. The one contaminated by that creature. The next day, when I peed and defecated, it was always accompanied by blood. So does my family. We have terrible headaches, nausea, and vomiting blood. It felt like something was moving in my stomach and breathing with me. And blood kept coming out from my nose and ears. We went to the hospital, but mom and dad died. The creature eats up their organs. I'm so thankful I survived. This is a lesson for all of us. In situations like this, be careful. Think carefully. Because our lives are at stake for every small action in a situation like this. Now during the interview we get flashes of what appears to be a poster of this Godzilla cult. But then the video cuts to the perspective of some unknown person stumbling upon a new infected creature. Now, this new sort of infected plant creature, I can only assume it to be Stephanie. Um, it kind of gives me Biolante vibes, so maybe that's what Jacob's going for with this new creature. And it's going to create more, like, kind of plant zombie creatures. And the ending with the, uh, it's time to fight back from that rando person in the dark. Um, I think that might be referring to maybe Mecha Godzilla potentially, because, I mean, I mean, how else are you going to fight back against Godzilla? Unless you have Mecha Godzilla, you know? So that'd be really cool to see if he actually does something with that. Now, overall, this series, I think, is very unique. I'm glad to see Jacob is using his artistic talents to create a, what I think is an overall pretty good Godzilla analog horror. Because, one, you don't really see that many of them. And also, two, it's kind of hard to actually do a, an effective one. But I think this series is very creative and underrated. And I really want to see what else Jacob does with this. Because the premise is... Um, very apocalyptic, but it'd be very cool to see him maybe do, you know, add on a little bit more to it before he decides to end it. But hey, what do I know? I don't know what's going through his head. Um, I'm just here to be supportive. So, <laughs> but as you can see, everyone, in this scenario, in this Godzilla attack, um, it's not looking good for humanity. Okay. Like I said earlier, we're basically cooked. I mean, we have Godzilla himself to worry about this sort of radiation infection that causes Godzilla zombies. Um, it can also affect animals and plants and food and water. And on top of all that, all these strange creatures that result in these mutations. Um, we also have a Godzilla cult that seems to be operating behind the scenes in the shadows. So yeah, basically it's an apocalypse of our own making. Um, yeah, it heavily implies that basically Godzilla, the only reason it even exists is because of our nuclear testing. So Essentially, it's man-made horrors beyond our comprehension. That's basically uh, the main takeaway of this series, I would say. Man's folly. <laughs>
But there you have it, everybody. That is the Godzilla Invasion series as it stands today by Jacob Animation. I'm sure he's going to add more to the series in the future, so be on the lookout. And go check out his channel and his other animations, because it looks pretty interesting from what other you know, stuff I've glanced at, so yeah. And if you guys like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and comment. I'm a YouTuber, everyone has to say that. I talk about many different other analog horror series on this channel amongst other things. Mysterious, go check it out for yourself. <laughs> and I always love reading you guys' comments. I try to read all of them as best I can, but let me know what your favorite Godzilla kaiju or movie is. I asked that in the uh, Godzilla, the Man of the Suit series video, but, uh, I want to know more about it here because there'll probably be some newcomers that watch this video, so I want to see what their opinions are. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. And just in case I don't see you, stay safe and have a good one. Goodbye.